I think every good expedition story has that edge of the unknown. Like you're not entirely sure what you're getting into. You feel like you know some of the building blocks for it, but you have no idea how it's going to unfold. Fourteen cases, everything's here. It's a little stressful. We thought it was actually going on a different plane, so it's a lot of money and logistics tied into this pile of gear right here. There's definitely a level of culture shock that happens when you go to these places to film. Not only are you there in a completely foreign place, but you stand out because of what you're doing there. Camera gear is inherently complex. And on this particular project, we were bringing a GSS aerial unit. The aerial system is an expensive and complicated bit of gear. They've made it as simple as they can, but you have so many moving parts. I mean, you're talking about a half million dollar camera gimbal. You know, in theory, everything works great. You do dry runs, you test stuff out. But the reality is, is that small problems can crop up. A small and relatively minor complication when you're in a place like PNG could take this entire system and shut it down. A few uh, hurdles along the way, but we've got a machine here, and uh, I don't know, we're T-minus maybe about two hours from having an operational aerial platform. That'll feel good once we got a picture. Picking an expedition like this and then covering it as a documentary is, is very challenging because these guys are going into an area where no one else can get to them. We're talking about a river canyon that's thousands of feet deep. There's no ability to just walk down the riverside to follow them. And we knew from very early on that they were going to be the people in position to get shots. And these are called the Zaxcom box, all right? So the first step says change batteries on ambient and Zaxcom boxes. There are some complicated things that were happening between audio systems and the camera systems and how they tied together via time code that really hadn't been used in a job like this before. And we knew in theory that it would work if we could teach these guys how to use the equipment. Turn on all the boxes. So go ahead, here, the three. You guys can all have a box here. I think we threw several pages of information at them, pretty technical information, processes that they had to abide by to make everything work in a very short period of time. And I think there were a lot of glazed eyeballs. So it was pretty nerve wracking then, kind of like, guys, you, you need to get this right or we don't have a show. It's all well and good for us to be putting all this camera gear together and coming up with these fancy, elegant technical solutions inside a hotel room. But these guys are then taking that into their tents. Everything's wet, everything's humid it's never drying out and they have to be able to work in that environment. I'm trying to get these, this little microphone to fit through this life jacket so that I can uh, get some audio while they're paddling down the river. Um, it's pretty critical to our sh show. This microphone can get wrecked pretty easily. This is not an easy task. Without knowing how often or if at all we're actually able to get into the river with these guys, we're pretty much sending them downstream with a belief that they're going to have to capture maybe half the show. Seeing the guys take off now and head into the canyons that make the Barrowman River what it is, it, it's a beautiful thing. It's incredible that the, the mission is now off and running. But it's also terrifying thinking, OK, now we are in a situation where we're going to have such limited access to the story. And from the outside, I think people would look at it and be like, well, you guys have a helicopter. I mean, what do you mean? You can go anywhere you want. But the Barrowman is truly inaccessible. There are huge rock walls that jet straight up from the river. And ultimately, the kayak is the only way to see this place.
getting close to the action on the Barrowman meant going into the confines of the Barrowman River Gorge. And in places, you know, we're talking gorges with only a little bit of wiggle room on either side of the actual rotor disc. David Adamson, our pilot, was just this magician in those places where he was willing to get in close and operate with very limited wiggle room on either side of the machine. And I, I mean, I remember these moments where, you know, David would say like, yeah, I think you should probably just keep looking through the monitor. You do not want to take your eyes off and see what's going on right now. And it was, you know, it was kind of terrifying, you know? I mean, you, you put your trust in this guy who you know is an amazing pilot, but at the same time, your instinct is telling you, this is not quite right. We probably shouldn't be here with this machine. David's ability to negotiate the heli in those tight spaces was ultimately the difference between some of the most amazing shots in the show and just another average wide angle perspective shot of the canyon. As a team, we had a relatively small footprint in Papua New Guinea. We're only five or six people, but we also have an A-star. And the A-star is loud and visible, and people don't see these machines fly around there very often. So in the course of the first couple days of filming and flying back and forth from Palmamal up to the river, some of the upstream villages were curious what was going on. And these people walked for like two days from the headwaters of the Barrowman down to Paul Mall Mall to find us. We were with the, you know, the people up there, and they were looking at the top flying that we were thinking, uh, why yeah. you know, the top is flying. The issue seems to be that Jacob has given permission and has specifically said that it's the Barrowman's lands. You guys are saying differently. That's something we need to figure out. Yes. There's a level of politics that is happening there that you'll never understand. They are not that truthful. They are not telling the truth. Yep. They are not be honest. Without knowing really where you stand, you definitely have a feeling of tension, and it's really hard to get a read off these guys whether they're happy about us being there or if they're kind of pissed off. Every day we're just walking this diplomatic line. This project has a time frame. We have to you know, get out of the country, the helicopter has to go home. All these things have to be completed by a certain date on the calendar. And right now, the guys are moving nowhere. They're literally making like 50 meters a day progress on this epic portage. And each day that they're on this portage is starting to feel like, okay, we are getting so close to that deadline of getting out of here that they may not get out of this river by the time everything has to fold up and leave. We're getting to the point where we're definitely exhausting our, our resources to some extent. You know, we're already getting pretty worn down. Everybody's coming down with a pretty good case of foot rot. I don't want to pretend I know what's going to go down in the next couple of days, but we should be done 100% with climbing our asses up and out of this river and lowering them back down. This project was right on the edge of success and failure. There was not a day that went by in Papua New Guinea where I didn't think it's over. This expedition was definitely far closer to that line of success and failure than we probably thought going into it. Seeing the guys hit the ocean, it was like we had that ending. We had a film in the can you can, you, you can almost smell the energy from them of success. 
And you know, that probably means as much to them as it means to us to have completed something that was really right on the edge from the minute we set foot in Papua New Guinea. Oh, <laughs> so hard, bro. I have many moments close to die, you know. And now I'm survival. <laughs> I don't think I do this many times more in my life. But really special moments, special peoples, and we're really happy.